Welcome to episode number three from this series on evolution. And in this episode, we're going to look at evolution as genetic change. Now, does natural selection act directly on genes? The answer to that question would be no, because natural selection works on an entire organism, not just an individual gene pair or two. So let's look over here in this picture down here below. Okay, here we've got a population of beetles. Some are brown and some are green. Now, what happens is, is that nature selects which of these colors is going to be the best. Now, this green individual here stands out against the tree bark. So the bird is going to eat the green ones because the bird can see it better. The brown ones are much more camouflaged, so therefore they have a better chance of survival. So that over time, we have more and more brown beetles and less green beetles. That's natural selection in a, in a nutshell. Now, was it selecting just the green allele? No. It was going after green individuals. It, and their phenotype is determined by all of the genes that they have, not just a single one. Okay? So I want you to remember what the definition of an adaptation is. This is a genetically controlled trait that increases fitness. Fitness is defined as the ability to survive and reproduce. The winners in nature get to pass their genes on to the next generation. And typically, the only way that you get to pass your genes on to the next generation is that you have the adaptations that allow you to su su um, survive long enough to be able to do that. Okay, remember, adaptations always increase fitness. Fitness is the ability to survive and reproduce. Oh. All right, now here we got a, an example right out of your textbook. Uh, and it's showing you a population of lizards. So in this case... The initial population has three phenotypes, brown, red, and black. And clearly, you can see the individuals with the highest fitness would be the brown ones. Maybe they live in a desert where the sand is pretty brown. Um, therefore, the brown ones are going to be much more camouflaged. Uh, the red ones should stand out. And the black ones sort of camouflage, but they'll stand out a little bit. So after 10 generations, you can tell that there's no more red ones. In fact, the red ones have probably all been eaten by birds of prey and other organisms. And you'll notice, though, that the black is becoming a little bit more common, maybe due to some type of environmental factor that the um, places where they can hide or the habitat is changing color. So now maybe it's become a little bit more darker. And so as the habitat changes color, notice over these generations... You're seeing more and more of the black and less and less of the brown. In other words, this population of lizards is evolving because they're having a change in gene frequency. In other words, the frequency of the black allele is increasing while the frequency of the brown allele is decreasing and the frequency of the red allele has essentially been removed because it offers no fitness. All right, So the black ones are becoming more fit, the brown ones are becoming less fit. That's evolution on a genetic scale. All right. So natural selection on polygenic traits. Remember, polygenic traits use more than one gene pair to create the phenotype, and it creates this bell curve of normal distribution. We talked about this on the previous episode in this series. Now, fitness can vary from one end of the curve to the other. All right. So let's look at this picture here. All right, so here we've got a bell curve of the various heights of, say, human beings, for example. Okay, so we have a few individuals in our society are really, really short, and a few individuals are really, really tall, and most individuals are just average, which in this case would be six foot six inches, which means I would love to be that average. All right, okay, so let's say that fitness varies along this curve. So Maybe individuals on this scale are less fit, and maybe individuals on this scale are more fit. So over time, we would expect the average height to increase. And if that would be the case, and this would be an example of directional selection, which is something we're going to cover in an upcoming screencast, okay? So just remember that an adaptation always increases fitness. Adaptations are controlled by genes. So over time, we should see the genes involved or that are involved 
with that adaptation to increase in frequency, and that's how we measure evolution. So until next time, we're going to catch you on the flip side.